Oh god, I was muted. Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. Uh, turn the music on here first. Very cool. And let's begin, shall we? Uh, I want to address something that's been asked of me twice now, which is, can I get these videos in 1080p? Uh, the answer to your question is, yeah, I probably can, but every time I go to look, I can't find it and I give up. At some point in my life, these videos will be in 1080p, I swear to you. I swear. And we're gonna play the champion. So I streamed this game last night, I've played a run with each of the champions, and I played like a few, like I played like three or four runs with Shardtail Queen. So I do know what Mr. Wendleton here does, because I know his name. Uh, I have a little more experience now than I did with Shardtail Queen. Oh, we got a little green, blue. I've also played a lot of runs against Seraph the Patient. I will tell you, uh, melee weakness is significantly harder than it seems like it is. The mechanics seemed to me in the last run like it was going to be very easy, the last run on the YouTube. And then I had a few runs that were like, uh, basically, I had a run, which will make it to the YouTube. I'm going to have all of the runs from last night here. All of my first impressions of the champions will be on the channel and highlights over the course of the next few days. But... I had a run with an Animus with like 70 regen that died because she just took like 150 damage in a single round. So you gotta super respect Seraph the Patient a lot more than you, or a lot more than I did in the last runs, but I didn't have to respect him in the last runs be, in the last run because I had uh, imps to chump block. Alright, so we got Razor Sharp Edge, Molten Encasement, and Ensnare. In my Discord, I have mapped out all of the boss spawn patterns if you want to see those as well it's in the info and announcements channel i have each of them mapped out along with some notes you can go check that out and if you want to catch me streaming this game i'm streaming it uh not tonight because this video will go up thursday i'll be back on saturday 10 30 p.m eastern time let's get to it shall we uh we got razor sharp edge molten encasement and ensnare molten encasement is a really good pickup. Like, tombs seem really strong against this Seraph. To me. And I think that this is the strongest champion. Uh, my hot take is that he seems very powerful to me. And which... Did we start with dregs? Yo, we started with dregs. Sick. This guy, he's the he's the three space. It seems like they're gonna keep to the idea of three two spaces, one three space, and one one space. Awoken's Wendleton is the three space, and Melting's Little Fade is the one space. I'm gonna pick... I mean, Tempered Talisman does literally nothing in this starter, so I guess I'm gonna take Whereas and Block, but this also does nothing. Neither of these do anything. Hmm. This doesn't seem very good. I guess I'll pick Tempered Talisman. It has the chance of being a little better. Resin block? I'm gonna pick resin block. We might end up with an endless tomb and you never know. You never know. So there's three paths for Mr. Champion. He has quick enchant to grant quick. Enchant is that effect that like haste enemies give, so his entire floor will have quick. Or there's Thornward. Add three stings and incant plus one. I played Thornward last night. I think it's really powerful. Uh, quick... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna try the quick enchant grant quick, because I have played the other one. Basically. And yeah, I think this guy's really strong. He seems like the one that you want to combine paths with the most. Him and, like, Shardtail Queen seem like they really want to combo paths. This feels like a good uh, trial. Did I sound so different to myself today? Because I have a new pair of headphone pads, so my... Like, my, my voice is getting blocked out, and I can't tell if I'm being, like, significantly louder than normal. If I am, I'm sorry. I'm adjusting to how I sound now that I have different pads. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, also don't forget to uh, drop me a like, comment, and also subscribe, if you so desire. That's the other one. That's what I was forgetting. I'm gonna root for the money here. I want the money. And you're at 35. You guys do six. If I put a train steward up here, you'll kill. Might as well drop a drag as well. So this quick combo, I'll tell you, I've seen all three of this guy's paths now. 
The other path he has is a sweep apply rooted to all characters, which is pretty cool. Come at me, Hellborn. I mean, if you insist, buddy. How many times do you think I've said that exact line? Come at me, Hellborn. I mean, you might not want to stand so close. I don't really want to parse that one. It's a gross joke, but like, you know. Who are you, the police? If you're a cop, you gotta tell me. And one off of him getting this kill. Hmm. I wonder if it was correct to razor sharp this foot soldier here. Too bad the, like, the first time in my life I wish the Molten Encasement was a 1-1. One, one. Oh, the big brain play was not to root seeds here. Oh, it was to play Molten Encasement and then root seeds the Molten Encasement. Now that would have been a genius level play. Oh well. It doesn't matter. It would have just looked so much cooler. You would have you would have immediately gone and commented, Wow, you're so smart, streamer. What a genius. And now you get to comment, Wow, what an idiot. Also, it doesn't matter, but you know. <laughs> uh... Dude, this, this dude, the reason that I think he's powerful is because he's really, really strong in the early game, right? He's a, I mean, his base health is a 30, I believe. And you have all of these built-in uh, ways to buff his attacks as well. He seems so strong to me. Sting buffed plus, plus 5 damage. I wonder if I'm picking Sting now that it's buffed. I'm gonna take it. The reason I'm taking it there is because... I think that the card is better than skipping, and I don't think Steel Enhancer or Vine Grasp do a ton. Vine Grasp, I guess, wouldn't have been bad. But I want to try Sting out as a card that you just take when it's not worth it to skip because it's a card. And I'm gonna take Molded because we have this. Resin block. <laughs> Animus of Speed. Is Animus of Speed the worst unit with this? Uh, no, probably not. She's not Paraffin Enforcer, but she's pretty close. Hmm. Wickless Baron. Let me look at the... So this is the Knockback and Slay Armor version of Talos, which has... The one that I have to figure out is I have to, fi I have to lock into my mind which one of these is the Sweep. And it's the... It's the Looming Shattering one. I have no idea what this is. This is like dazed and like harvest, I think this is. I think this is dazed and harvest, which is blinding shattering. I think this is curse of shadow. I'm not sure. That's something that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to lock those into my brain right now. I don't really like any of these takes. Yeah, Wickless Baron might not have been bad. Maybe I should grab Wickless Baron. Wickless Baron's good if there's a sweep here. Let's go to the left. Multi strike. I should pick Wickless Baron. What a shame. Oh, hey, never mind. Shattered Shell with built in quick. That seems pretty cool. And a multi strike right here. Oh, hey. I like that. So we're probably picking space because I think that the big strategy on this is going to be. Endless Tomb to counteract all of the negatives of the boss. Armor 10 kind of scares me. I don't feel like I want the unit draft either. I think I'm going to pass this. Because Armor 10's awkward. Uh, this guy doesn't get his first kill, so he never starts to scale. Well, it's 6. I guess you could get there. Is it worth it, though? What unit would I draft here? I would draft... Hmm... I don't know what I would draft here. Probably nothing. I think I'm gonna... Armor 10. It's like, if I set myself top 4, I have 2 turns. I have 8 cards to hit. Uh, I need to hit 2 Root Seeds or 1 Razor Sharp Edge. Or a Sting. 
I'm gonna not do it. I think it's not worth it. I don't think that- I, I feel like with the quick enhancement and Shattered Shell, yeah, like, I also didn't take into consideration this possibility. But, like, these two together, I want him to go first here. No, I don't think it matters enough. These two together seem kind of busted. I think that these two basically 1v1 the boss as long as I don't die to uh, spell weakness, or melee weakness rather. Which I will, unless... I, so the, the secret to beating this is going to be to leave in a train steward to put up here and protect the train steward. And if I do that, I should be fine. I'm glad I didn't take this trial also. Because uh, no matter what I do, Wendleton here... Uh, what's, his, na his name is actually not Wendleton, but I just am going to call him Wendleton from now on. It's a very posh name for a man with ice fists. Why would you offer me cycle of life here? Ugh. I might just take sap. The interesting thing is that- oh my god, Intent on Death too, what the fuck? Two rares! Intent on Death is pretty good. I mean, I think Intent on Death basically just auto-wins us the game. Because we just put it- we, we take space from Talos, and then we go... Uh, hold over Intent on Death, put a Molten Encasement down, and then Wendleton, and then our boy, the... the multi-strike boy, and then we just crush. Uh, large stone is bad here. I hope there is not a large stone. Oh, hey, endless. Sick. <laughs> yeah. But endless on a molten encasement. This counteracts Seraph the Patient pretty well. Especially with the intent on death. So, plus five, plus ten. I wish I had picked up a steel enhancer now, but it's okay. We'll get this guy going. And yeah, I think we just power remove now. I think we just power out removals now. The idea is just gonna be we use Molten Encasement. We're gonna have a little trouble with heavies. I think. I This is a level of planning that we don't need to get into right now. We, we still have some hurdles to overcome. Does Awoken Hollow help us? It doesn't hurt us necessarily, it's like not a bad fallback plan, but I have no built-in healing here. Other than the Wildwood Sap, so I don't really love this. He's just gonna kind of get in the way. I don't like it. Dante. Dante cleans up heavies. I don't like Dante when you don't have something that benefits from his artifact, though. And I don't want to take energy to foot combat the Dante Candles. Dante Candles are awkward. However, there's a reasonable case to be made. Since we probably crushed through this boss, there's a reasonable case to be made to take Dante there. It's not a wrong, uh, not a wrong take to pick Dante. And this is the Armor Knockback, which has the same spawn pattern as... I think... I think that this is... this is Plating Seal, Daedalus. This is Plating Seal, for sure. Which means there's no haste, is all we need to know there. Don't forget that she hits. Is she the knockback version too? Yeah, okay. So we start like this. So that when she hits him, he goes to the back, and then hopefully he doesn't get hit again. We'll see though. Huh, he went top. Or she went top, rather. Oh, she's gonna steal. She's gonna take armor here, right? Oh no, this is the pushback one. The rage one gains the armor. That's my mistake. Okay. I wonder if I'm supposed to upgrade... or... Wildwood Sap? Chattered Shell? Probably not. Give him a Root Seeds. What is this metal contraption? It's called a train? Uh, it's called it's called a train, yeah. 
No wait on the Wildwood Sap. It feels like a waste either way here. I think the Wildwood Sap does get a little worse when you don't have Restore in your deck, interestingly enough. Please go middle four so I can feel like a genius. Thank you. He gets pushed into the back. I don't care about your incant because I'm quick. Just taking 102 damage. Wow. It feels... It doesn't matter if I split the heavies or not now. This is over. As long as she doesn't hit middle floor again. If she hits middle floor again, I guess it could be bad. So it's actually kind of a coin flip. Hmm. That's kind of awkward. I didn't plan out a third hit from her in my in, when I was planning my positioning. Put these train stores down here to hopefully bait her into going down there. We'll see. I don't think she can go... Uh, I, I think she should go bottom floor here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Now, don't, don't hold me to this, but it feels to me like these bosses and... Like, these bosses seem to rotate between floors. Like, if there's three floors available and she hasn't gone to this floor in two turns, I think she's supposed to go to this floor. I'm pretty sure, but I don't actually know. Like, I have no way to know. So, you know, don't hold me to that. It's just kind of a guess. It worked out here, but that might just be the variance, right? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The man is up to 78 times 2. It's a very fragile setup, right? We're one... Like, this boss could have definitely killed me if I had put Wendleton in the front. However, I outthought her. Is this over in two rounds? Oh, no, it's the regen. Okay. Sick. Solid fight, solid fight. Very good. I like this quick a lot. Channel Song is really nice, but it doesn't work here. I can't pick Channel Song here. It clashes with the dregs, and I'm going to leave some of this stuff in to try and bait melee weakness out. I think I like Unleash the Wildwood here. Unleash the Wildwood is good because... I need to be able to burst heal Wendleton, because he's going to take big chunks from Seraph. I feel like any healing is a good pickup. And now I don't have space for a Wickless Baron. We got something even better, in my opinion. Wickless Tycoon isn't the worst. Like, I don't mind taking him and just dropping him top floor, let him harvest up on these dregs. And then when we get to Seraph, sometimes he's, he's the guy who's going to bait melee weakness. It doesn't hurt our consistency too much, and then we take space, for sure. It actually doesn't hurt our consistency at all. It can hurt our consistency if, like, middle floor loses space, because then I would have to set bottom floor, but I can also just set top floor, and then on that combat I just call it a wash in terms of money, which is fine. Go left. Probably just duplicate Wildwood Sap and remove two train stewards. I think so. This path isn't bad either. I don't mind healing here. But let's pull two train stewards. I don't need any of these. And I think I just dupe sap. Uh, regen plan is never wrong, it feels like to me. And what do you have for me? So... Whoa, he gets multi-strike? Oh, that's kind of neat. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want him to be sweep because he'll go first and he'll steal all of the kills from our boy. But this is th this is the combo right here. If I didn't have the the shattered shell, quick sweep, strike apply rooted. He'll just sit there and he'll lock the entire floor down basically. Nothing gets to leave, and then he just farms. But he also might die, so you have to have ways to keep him alive, I imagine. I haven't played this one yet. I'm gonna go all the way on Predator. Him and Shattered Shell can do some good stuff here. I imagine this is up to four? Kinda cool. Strike them before they strike you. I don't care about the spell shield. I think the only damaging spell in this deck is Sting. I think so. 
The resin block has been completely worthless and is probably going to continue to be completely worthless. Also on a curse combat, especially in this early game where I don't need to make use of Molten Encasement, I'm fine with playing it like this. And we can just drop Wickless Tycoon on the top floor. No catch collectors up there. One off of the lethal there. Honestly, kind of good we missed that kill. Yeah, we need less of these draws. We missed this collector, but we also get to intent on death it for 75 gold. If only I didn't miss this one by one. Too bad. The scaling on our Shattered Shell is going to take a while. Until I get to the other cards. Not the root seeds, but the other ones. The razor sharp edges. But it doesn't really matter that much because we have all this healing built in that he can take it now. This deck feels very strong. It answers bad situations pretty well. And dude, this guy this this combo seems like this is what it was designed for, right? Shattered Shell, he punches down the front line, weakens them, and then Shattered Shell just cleans up. I really like it. Oh, I do get hit up here. I didn't pay close enough attention to this guy. I thought he was going up with a lot lower health. Oh well. It's fine. It takes six. It's not the end of the world. I don't know if there was anything I could have done about that also with the draw I had. There might have been. There probably was. It's okay. The only thing we're really, really weak against is Sower of Sorrows, and I guess the Stealth Boss, but the Stealth Boss we can, uh, we can delay the Stealth Boss. Yeah, we, we also have the Stealth in a lot of situ- or not- yeah, we have the Stealth, so we're not weak against Stealth Boss. Uh, we're mostly just weak against Sower of Sorrows, but even still we have the Stealth. We should be pretty strong here. Iron Grove's kinda sick, right? Although I didn't take first draw, but if I take Pyrogrow, I can take Pyrogrow plus one draw. And I think it's fine. It's going to be a little awkward to play right now, but down the line it's going to be a lot better. Let's skip that. We're looking for a holdover, so we're looking for a magic shop here. Yeah, we're just looking for the magic shop. The removals are nice, but we'll just buy removals here. RIP double stack. It's not the worst here. I don't hate this, actually, because I'll throw it a minus one, and it's still fine, and then we duplicate it a few times, and it's pretty solid. No holdover. Acceptable. Minus one, a razor sharp edge. And we'll purge two. I'm gonna purge these last two train stewards. I like dropping this 150 on two removals whenever you can, power you up a little bit quicker. The later removals are a little more situational, but those two removals are pretty solid. Oh, oh. I mean, I love this, but I cannot. We'll just make him tiny. That's really sweet, though. Making him tiny is really, really nice. On some of these combats, I'm just going to put the... Tycoon on that floor now and just take the money when I don't need to worry about the stealth Although I probably need to worry about the stealth from here on. It's still nice. It's a lot more. I can set up on any floor now I'm okay with this trial six damage for 150 gold is solid I like it. I think there are situations where you don't take that trial, but they're pretty few It is a sweep combat as well We gotta watch out. Look at him, he's so tiny. I like it. Yeah, the multi-strike is gonna be a little awkward from time to time when it steals kills like that, but also those were not kills that I feel too bad about losing. Uh, I'm missing, missing the collector I feel a little bad about. If I just drop the Tycoon here? Instead of the stealth? No, I shouldn't disrespect self-made harpy. I still get the money also, so this is fine. I should definitely not disrespect self-made harpy. Of all of the bosses in the game to disrespect, I think self-made harpy is the lowest on my list of bosses to disrespect. 
Self-made harpy is not one to be trifled with. She's pretty rude. She? He? Might be a he. We'll read his lore. Oh, a video I was thinking about that I wanted to uh, run by you was just me reading the lore to you. I was thinking about doing this just because I, I like, when I'm reading the lore, I, like, I kind of just enjoy reading the lore. I wanted to pose this video idea to you. See what the general take is. Oh yeah, the sweep is... It's hard to kill these encasements. Huh. That's weird. I don't think I want to split this next wave. Maybe I was supposed to split this wave, but it feels wrong because it's going to make a double heavy wave. We don't want to make double heavy waves when we can avoid it. Oh, I mean, quick... Quick is just crazy. Intent on death next turn. It's just kinda nutty, I gotta say. I also think that Wickless Tycoon, I think, is one of the most interesting units in this game, since I literally just pick him for the 20 gold per round that he gives us here. And I'm happy about it, too. It's not like a... Or 20 gold per combat, I should say. I pick this guy and I go, yes. I will take this for 20 gold. And I'm happy about it, too. Not a little bit of upset about it. He doesn't even he doesn't even do anything else. He, he's up there just kind of chilling in case like a, an enemy just barely survives in the early game. Not that that happens. Uh, no train steward to get free money out of because I removed them all. Let's just press that turn there. Cool, cool, cool. I love his weird ice fists. Edge prior worthless. Bramble lash worthless. Restoring retreat. I think is worthless as well. No pet, no take, no take. The Valor of Death actually isn't the worst here. I have space for him. So I could just drop him in the back of that sweep floor and let him harvest up, and then maybe he pops an important thing. But for the most part, I think this is not great. The big problem with it is, I, I think I would maybe, I would probably pick this in another run, but against specifically Seraph the Patient, I want to keep the number of units I'm aiming to play to a minimum. I'm going to keep looking for holdover here. One holdover is a win. A permafrost on Unleash the Wildwood doesn't seem like it's the worst idea. Reasoning there being that... Uh, He's, he's not always gonna- I'm not always gonna draw Unleash the Wildwood when I need to. Don't forget, this guy has 30 health. I really, really need a hold over on this round. Let's make a Root Seeds cost zero. Like, I'm, I'm really in the market for a hold over. Hold over is probably going to be... It's the difference maker between being probably fine and... Like... Holdover is 100% a win, and this is, like, maybe a win. Sin of Darkness. Oh, I called this the Sin of Shadow. There we go. Switch that to Darkness. I thought this was Sin of, sin of Shadow. Maybe there's two difference? It's... No, there are two difference. Okay. Darkness is the... Oh, Darkness is Spell Shield Fell. Okay. Right, okay, okay. I know where we're at. This is the one with the incants and the harvests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now... Rally Dazed, we will not play in two. I now recognize that this is uh, Rally Dazed to the entire floor, not Rally Dazed to a single unit. I made that mistake in yesterday's video with the Imp Queen. My bad. Yeah, we just play up here, right? It's fine now. In the past, it was like, like before we got that minor refraction, it was a little awkward, but now it's just fine. And then this is looming, so I can't cast spells up there. So, joke's on you, I wasn't casting any spells anyway. Nerd. Let's press end turn. Maybe with the stealth, I'm supposed to put Wendleton in front. Or, no, not Wendleton, the other guy maybe is supposed to go in front here. Hmm. 
This one's interesting. I don't think I care about Wildwoods or Unleash the Wildwood going up by. This isn't gonna give this guy the kill though. I probably just press end turn. Yeah, I'm not losing anything here. I can just press end turn. It's fine. I mean, I may as well do this, I guess. There's no reason not to give that guy plus two and take the plus one draw. But, like, the stealth tomb dying might even just be good. Take plus four this turn. Fine. We even get extra money. Look at that. Oh, when, when the tomb dies, it starts doing damage because of... That's right, it's endless, and now with quick, that plus 10 actually matters. How weird. I like it. 93. This is rallying? Oh, this is blinding. I don't think I care about the dazed. Like, the dazed one just means that they miss this round. I guess this guy misses the next round as well. But I'm just gonna root this anyway. Okay. Yeah, I don't really care about that dazed. I miss like 12 damage on the boss. We're. Pr I'm pretty sure we're close. Yeah, so now I take. Like, now we play into this Looming Dark Shard. And I just have to, and it's not that big of a deal. I don't have to necessarily, but it's correct to. So, first, let's play out the spells that I do not care about playing on this floor Sting. And probably this Root Seeds. This, wild, this Unleash the Wildwood is not going to be played on this combat. I'll tell you. Intent on Death I should take the extra stealth for. But I should play Razor... So one Razor Sharp Edge is going to cost one. One of them is going to stay at zero. And then these Root Seeds are just going to become unplayable. And that's okay. Oh, Intent on Death is going to cost uh, two if I do it like this though. So it's like zero... One, two. I think I just play this up here then. Get out of the hand. I think that that is fine. I think that that is fine. Yeah. If I can draw seven per turn, if we can draw six per turn and uh, pan out a few of these cards here, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Should have picked Restoring Retreat, fool. May as well be reforming dregs up here so that I get the extra money from them, too. Cool, cool. I really like these Dark Shards. I think they're really interesting. They don't feel bad to play around, right? Like, that turn, it, it, it had its negative impact on me, but it didn't feel bad. I felt fine doing it. It was like a, It's like a calculated uh, hit there that we took. I like this boss a lot. I don't really have any problems with this one. Patient occasionally feels bad to me. I think that this guy just feels fine. Hey, this doesn't look great. Wait a minute. Alright, I hate this boss. I take it back. I hate him. Hmm. This is what I get for not playing top four, I guess. The weakness of this deck is bosses, right? It definitely looks that way. I need to be stacking up a lot more stealth than I am currently. I don't think we'll die off of this. It's just real weird. I'm gonna overcome this boss with dregs. But yeah, hold over intent on death is the only thing I need to find to beat the bosses here. Put this one in the back so it gets to hit him. Yeah. Like, we won't kill Seraph right now, but... Uh, hopefully that changes. Also, this was all a part of my plan to earn more money, of course. Maximize income. Holdover we win, no holdover we probably lose. I could also just Endless and then I can have a fallback plan, right? Endless Tome is very simple. It's a fallback plan for Shattered Shell, for sure. I like that. And then we take Draw here. Yeah, hold over, or we just power out enough removals that it doesn't matter. One of the two. Hmm. And we get to try for both, at least. I could also... I'm gonna duplicate Intent on Death here, for sure. Start purging Root Seeds. Even though the card doesn't do anything negative, it actually, like, it does, because 
the turns where I draw it are bad turns. So like, even if I'm drawing my entire deck every other turn, that means that every other every other turn is bad. So we'll go ahead and duplicate Intent on Death. Multi Strike 2. I mean, I kind of like this one here. I'm gonna tell you, I don't really care about him getting Multi Strike 2. I think I'd much rather take the extra 20 health and then the three Sting spells. Because th this guy is like your next, your second turn, you cycle like crazy, and the incant's gonna hit similar to this eventually, right? He's doing 75 versus 40. I have to incant like it's a, it's a, I have to incant 17 times, which obviously is not uh, easy, but I don't think that his damage output matters that much to me. I'm not buffing him, basically. I'm buffing Shattered Shell. Where and I get to buff Shattered Shell a lot faster with those stings. Oh, Shade Wings don't stand a chance. I'm not gonna take the trial though, cause ten one ninety scare me. But the Shattered or the the Shade Wings don't even get to take a turn ever. Minus one bottom floor is preferable. Maybe I. Hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to play uh, Bottom Fort just so I can get the value out of the stings. I wonder. I'm gonna go ahead and just sting this guy four times and play a molded up here. I'm fine with that. I think the multi-strike version of this guy is meant to be like your spamming uh, upgrades on him, right? And you have a tank in front of him, not him being the tank as it is in this one. Yo, holy shit, I could just... I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna make two... I'm just gonna make 300 gold off of that collector. Oh my god, what a dream. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> You're not supposed to make that much gold off of a single collector. I wouldn't be surprised if that got changed at some point. We root seeds and try to not take uh, damage from this guy. We're gonna take damage from this guy, but we try to make it under 20, which we can. More than anything else there care about. And yeah, this is this is the awkward section. The early game is where we're really weird. And not really that good. Double heavies are problematic, however, double heavies don't exist beyond this combat. And I have plenty of pyre health to just take it. No large stone is a little awkward to get the scaling started, right? He, t he struggles to get to 190 without the large stone. That's what Wendleton's supposed to do. But also, uh, like, that was the only real double heavy wave, so that's the only one that's gonna get really bad. Uh, maybe keep this guy here? I'm gonna keep this guy here. I could Molten Encasement up here, and then just... Okay, 125. He's uh, Molten Encasement pushes 9 more damage, which means that I won't get anything good out of it, right? Pushing 9 more damage means that we'll go to 28, which puts him not below the next threshold, which is 80. So we take 30 from this guy, and that is... Acceptable. Like, taking 40 from this combat is okay. But could not pick the Heaven Seal trial, of course, here. That would have been suicide. Every one of those, both of those heavies would have done 50. I would have taken 100 damage. Would have been not uh, optimal there. Not ideal, one may say. Go ahead and power up our stealth. Stealth Tombs putting in work. The Stings aren't bad. Like, it's not a bad draw there. Uh, it's a bad draw, but the next turn is better. I don't know. I think the difference is that the reason that I'm okay with Stings and not okay with the other one is because Root Seeds cost energy. When Root Seeds is zero cost, I'm like, hell yeah, dude, get me in there. When it's one cost, I'm like, well, are we sure there's not a better way? Are you certain that there's not a better choice there? I mean, we have we have 10 stealth, or no, 11 stealth. This is looking roughly strong enough now. We're closing in on it being perfectly fine. The problem is, I mean, I won't have to replay them a lot of times once we get the intent on deaths. Once I get to the intent on deaths, I won't have to replay them because Seraph 
Or uh, because they'll be stealth, right? There's no Wilt Wings on the Seraph combat. That's what I'm trying to say. That guy died to a 50 attack tomb. That's rough, buddy. Okay. Solid. I mean, he's got 14 stealth, right? I think that this is good. I think we take this. However. Kind of close. Preserve Thorns is not the worst. Uh, I'm just going to grab Invigorating Solution here, I think. The first time through the deck is the only real scary part. Bodavari. Mortal Entrapment. Bodavari. I don't want to take too many things with Endless that Seraph can farm me on. But in theory, Seraph's attack won't matter because we're going to be perma-stealth. If we're ever not stealth, we probably insta-die. But, you know, just stay stealthed. Easy. Also, double intent on deathing a collector is something that I've dreamed about doing for so- I mean, intent on deathing a collector once I've dreamed about. Twice is like, oh, 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 oh baby, that's a lot of money. Don't need thorn casing here. You might like snap pick it because I'm playing stings, but it's not that good. I definitely feel like in my short time with these new champions, each of the champions, each of these champions feels like you're more rewarded for uh, mixing the paths than the other champions reward you, right? Outside of like Tethys, because Tethys was really good about making value for picking multiple paths. I don't really like any of this. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it. Pyrewall's nice. Uh, maybe it's not worth a removal. Let's first Unstable Vortex. Getting rid of some drags is fine now. I want to leave in the Tycoon, though, because I actually want a unit with draw priority in my run. I want to be able to hit him and put him top four within the first two turns so that the early sections before I get those stealth tombs I don't lose. I'm just going to buy two removals here. I want to be able to have units on the top four for the melee weakness as fast as possible. I'm still trying to feel out how much I need to respect melee weakness. Like, this run might be an auto win, but I also could get overconfident and die, so I'm trying to respect it. Go down to 23 uh, cards in the deck. I should I, I cycle through the deck in four turns max. A little less than that. In reality, because of the plus one draw cards, probably three turns with the stings and the invigorating solution. Middle floor, top floor was a space. I think I'm okay with just playing bottom floor here. So, the rally effect is scary, of course, but I think that we just put a drag up here and we just play down here and it's fine. It doesn't really matter where they are, I don't think. So here's, here's the problem. Here's how I lose this run right here. Let me tell you. And I'm actually going to go against what I just said, because here's how I lose this run. I play down here and I go, it's fine. And then on my next turn, I don't draw Molten Encasement. Seraph comes down here and puts Melee Weakness on Wendleton, and I just insta-lose. Because it's 22. I guess it's only... Actually, I don't lose, right? Because the... Oh, no, it's, it's like no damage, actually. So, no, it's fine. Because next wave is two 15 threes, which just died of the quick sweep. Because we kill the 15 threes before they get to take their turn, I think this combat... With the regen built in, I think it's really hard for him to die no matter where I put him. Unless Seraph one-shots him. So if we keep Seraph below 30 attack, it should be free. Yeah, yeah. Let me just let me just double check and make sure I'm correct. Right, so next wave is 2-15-3. So in the worst situation, or honestly in the best situation, Seraph comes down here, puts melee weakness on him, and then I just... Uh, I just take 20. Okay, this is fine. Then we just put one sting here, two go here. Okay, and in the best case, Seraph just goes top four here. We win the 50-50. Yeah, Seraph just leaves. Fuck off, Seraph. Puts the melee weakness up here where I don't care about it. Now I did not hit my, uh, my tombs, and I hit both intent on deaths. Very interesting. I think I am going to drop the Tycoon up here, by the way. I'm going to give him five attack play this stuff first. It's free. I think I'm fine with giving him 5 attack, and putting Tycoon up here is... Oh, he dies, actually. Hmm. 
Maybe I just put in middle floor. I think I do just put in middle floor. Now that I look at it, there's no reason to put him up here. I'll take 15, I'll take 11. It doesn't matter. We have 100 Pyre Health to play with. And I just play Intent on Death down here. Mold it as well. Okay. The bad part of this wave is that I get no scaling for our boy. So I might end up just bleeding too many heavies. It's a little bit scary. Bottom floor. I had a pretty good feeling he had to come bottom floor here. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't think I skipped the Molten Encasements here. I'll say that for sure. I can Pyre Grow down here. This is an engine upgrade. If I root this guy, I buy myself another round, but why? Good question, but why? I root here so that it dies next turn. That's better. Throw a drag up here just to tank a hit. Uh, I'm thinking I just play these Molten Encasements. I think I might just I might just play one. I might play the Endless one. The fear is that leaving the one melee weakness on him might be bad, but I don't think I care because we put so much stealth up that it doesn't matter. Remember, we can rally this guy up to four times and have it work out effectively the same as a regular Seraph. So by playing around it and thinking about it, I can make this fight easier than a normal Seraph. We just gotta watch out for that melee weakness, but we have things to stand in front of melee weakness right now. So really we just need to use stings to clean up light wings now. So that we don't just lose randomly. Hmm. Just throw this top floor. I think we have it now. It's I, the Seraph. I go back and forth on how I feel about him. I think I really like him, but it's hard for me to tell. I'm not a hundred percent certain on how I feel about him. He requires a lot of thinking, like more thinking than I'm used to giving a boss. But at the same time, it's like it's it's kind of fun. I'll say. Uh, you can go down the floor, it's fine. Oh wait, he'll die. I, I believe he has to go bottom floor here, right? I think that what I have finally picked up on after all this time is that these bosses are forced- they cycle through the floors. Yeah. So, if there's a unit on every floor, he goes top- or he'll go like bottom, middle, top, if, if I just have a- so right now he's gonna go bottom, middle, bottom, middle, bottom, middle. That's how it's gonna work. From here on. I don't play any units down here. And if I just keep you locked in here with me forever, you'll eventually die. This was a waste. I should have just taken the four uh, incants, right? Dudes are having a fucking duel to the death up there, though. Now, did we win off of this? Oh, yeah, we went off of this. What the hell? Why is that even a question? Why would I even ask myself that? Do we win off this? We have, uh... You know... 16 stealth and we're doing 200 damage per round. You do the math. You tell me, do we win off of that? And we even get more money. All I have to do is not play a drag on this floor. Now, uh, Seraph will not move to the top floor here because it's the beginning of Relentless, but you can, uh, you can use that as a general rule of thumb, I think. I have learned. It's very... it's very interesting, right? Because some of them don't work that way, namely Daedalus does not seem to work that way. Daedalus doesn't seem like he cycles through the floors, he just puts his bombs randomly. But bosses that have to impact a floor, like Sap Seraph, Chase Seraph, uh, Diligent doesn't have to work that way. But And Rage Fell doesn't work that way because she doesn't affect your units. But I think Sap Seraph, Chase Seraph... And curse fell doesn't matter. Uh, so I think it's mostly just the seraphs that work that way, actually. The, the general rule of thumb seems to be that if they affect your units, they cycle through the floor. So if they buff or debuff your units, I guess it's just debuff, they'll cycle through each floor, starting at a random floor, it seems like, and then they move to the floor that they impacted the last time. Like, the furthest back. So, like, if they... And on turn two, I think it's just whichever floor there's a unit on. If there's a unit on each floor, it's just kind of random. 
and then it seems like they go to a floor based on which one they impacted last. You can use that as a rule of thumb to plan out against Sap Seraph, Chase Seraph, and this one. And also maybe Spell Shield Fell? No, Spell Shield Fell is random and so is Rage Fell, that's why they're so frustrating. Because they affect random floors. But that rule of thumb would just lead to Fell raging the same floor every turn, so, you know. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll give you my closing thoughts on Wendleton real quick, because I just kind of went into the, uh, the, the ending there. This guy's really cool. I really like him. And I've played all of, I haven't played all of his paths, but that sweep path seems really cool as well. Multi-strike, sweep, rooting. He locks enemies down forever. I like it. He's really neat. Three space feels pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow we'll play Stygian. I think the Stygian champion might be the strangest one to me. He's really weird. But, anyway, thank you for watching again. Uh, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, the comment, the subscribe. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.